What's up everybody? Today's video, actually, there's gonna be a long video again. Um, this is the follow-up video to the home mycology cliff notes. This is, in that, in that video I did um, uh, manure slash uh, enriched soil loving varieties. In this video I'm gonna be doing hardwood loving gourmet type mushrooms. So in that cliff notes video I showed uh, inoculating these these uh, grain spawn or these grain jars with a uh, this is turkey tail and then I did a couple of them with lion's mane actually I didn't show inoculating the I showed inoculating um, agar plates with the liquid culture I had for these but these are lion's mane this one's antler rishi look at that it has metabolite kind of seeping out there already it looks like or something antler rishi and Rishi, and I've been waiting way too long. You can see those are way too colonized. They've been sitting in there in this box just waiting. But uh, either way, now I'm finally getting around to it. It's time to make some uh, some uh, wood pellet bags so I can fruit these in. Well, colonize first, then fruit them in. So this is gonna be basically not start to finish, but this is gonna be from where the grow diverges from my last video. If you want to know how to get to this point, colonize grain jars, watch the uh, Home Mycology Mushroom Cultivation Cliff Notes, and it'll get you to this point the exact same way as what I did. Um, and from this point on, from the colonized grain jars on, it's slightly different for the wood-loving varieties, because generally you want to make fruiting blocks out of hardwood substrate, maybe some bran in there if you, need, if you want to. But uh, we're going to start now by preparing the... Um, hardwood substrate. So I've got a bucket here and my hardwood pellets and the ratio of this is gonna be uh, basically to, if you want to make a five pound bag it'll be five cups of hardwood pellets and like 5.9 cups of water and one cup of bran but the bran comes in later after you've already hydrated and smashed up the uh, hardwood pellets. So I'm gonna do five times that to make five, um, five fruiting blocks, one for each of these grain jars. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Like I said, it is five of these cups for each bag. So I'm gonna make 25 cups of grain, or 25 cups of, excuse me, 25 cups of the hardwood pellets. By the way, the I got oak wood pellets Basically, any hardwood works. Oak is a really hard one, so it'll work really well. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and dip in 25 cups of this, which is a lot. Four and five. So we're going to start with five, just to show what I'm going to do here. There's five in the bucket. I'm actually going to do, you know, 20 more, but five cups of that to 5.9 cups of water. Um, you don't have to boil this water like I did when I made bulk substrate for the other kind of mushrooms, the uh, um, enriched soil type mushrooms. I used cocoa coir and I had to boil it, the water, because basically you were pasteurizing that substrate. This substrate, we're gonna pressure cook it so it doesn't need to be pasteurized, but hot water does help it uh, break down and soak it up faster. So I'm gonna do that. So there's five cups in there. Right now, like I said, this is just, I'm doing one fifth of what I'm actually gonna do just to kind of demonstrate here, but five cups of pellets are in there. And I'm gonna do 5.9 cups of water, or however close I can get to that. So I'll just go slightly above two cups a few times and I'll probably end up somewhere around 5.9. So there is two. There's Four, and we go almost up to the two this time, it'll be 5.9, blink. Yeah, we'll call that 5.9-ish, close enough. Well, uh, maybe a more, blink. There we go, yep, 5.9 on the dot. So either way, that's basically all there is to hydrating this. I'm gonna go ahead and make it even here, make sure the water's all over these, and then close it off and come back in about 30 minutes, hour, however long it takes. But either way, that's what I'm gonna do, except for I'm gonna do that times five. So I'm gonna do this 
four more four more uh, loads, four more units, and I'll uh, come back when this is all done absorbing the water and ready to break up. Okay, now this wood pellet and brand substrate is all mixed up to the right fuel capacity. I squeeze it, and a couple little drops come out, but no running water basically. So now we've got these uh, bags, these hardwood fruiting bags basically, mushroom fruiting bags. And I had Julie, she rolled the top over like this so that none of this crap gets on the inside top part there. I'm basically going to fill this up until I've got uh, five pounds in this bag. Yeah. So let's see what it ends up being here. Okay. Yeah, it smells like bran in here now. Wait, it says like... That's grams. Oh. So we're almost to two pounds. Oh crap, I just made a mess, damn it. I always make a mess, bulk substrate. Oh, okay. That's still looking not even close. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up five of these bags like this. Hopefully I'll have enough for five bags. How much is that, 12? So that's, we're about at three pounds. Wow. About three pounds, that's 19, whoa. Uh, so we're about four pounds there. Let me just go ahead and put five on there and make sure we're good here. 20, so I'm shooting for, actually we're probably at five pounds right there. What's uh, 2280 divided by 454? Go babe, so I need to yeah, right. quick math on the spot, let's go. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's somewhere around five pounds, close enough, either way. I'm getting these ready. I'll come back when I got all these done filling up here after I do the math and figure out exactly how much I'm supposed to have in there. But yeah, uh, I'm going to make five five pound bags and then we're going to start uh, the pressure cooking process with these bags. Back in a second. Okay, I'm back. I just loaded up, me and Julie, just loaded up five of these bags, kind of smash them down. So these are first two. I'm going to try and fit three of these at a time into my, um, into my pressure cooker over there. So here's what I do basically to get these things ready. I already did that to these two, but this is take them, make sure there's nothing around the inside, nothing like extra bulk substrate, any crap around there that's gonna be problematic later. So basically clean, people wipe it out with a wet towel or something like that, but I'm just filling my hand to make sure there's nothing there. And then basically just fold it up. I fold up these two like this, because these are gonna go on the bottom of the pressure cooker. I'm gonna try, like I said, I'm gonna try and fit three of them in there. Maybe four. We'll see, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this, kind of fold it up, go like this, wait, there, around, make sure the inside is clean, fold it up like that. Actually, this one's gonna go on top, so I'll just fold this one all the way around like that. So it's a nice fat square sucker. And I'm gonna start putting these two into my pressure cooker, which I already got the pressure cooker heating up. So when it comes to pressure cookers, basically your number one consideration is you don't want to run out of water while you're pressure cooking something. This is going to be pressure cooked for about two and a half hours. So you're going to need a decent amount of water in there. Let's see if I can fit these right again. So yeah, there's a decent amount of water in there. But uh, the thing is, the more water you put in, the longer it takes to heat up and start get to get the pressure. So, you know, it's a, a, a give and take. How you want how much you wanna put in there. So like I said, the uh, the more you put in, the longer it'll take to start getting up to pressure. But if you don't put in enough, then you will have uh, a pressure cooker that could possibly run dry in the process, and then you'll have some real problems. So there's those two, and basically I have those like with the way that wrapped in this one has the top layer like that so unfortunately I don't have I'm not gonna be able to fit all five in here so I'm just gonna do three now I'll do the other two together in the next batch but um, so that's how this goes the other thing is actually let me just put this in the middle then since I'm doing it the other thing with this is you want to put a uh, some on top of this so that uh, you don't end up Messing up your pressure cooker's uh, emergency features, <laughs> like, <yeah. coughs> like pressure release valve. You don't want this. 
this bag getting up on the pressure leash valve or anything like that. So I'll throw a plate on top of there. And there's plenty of water. The water is going at least up to like halfway up the side of the bag here, so it should be fine. So either way, that's how that's set up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. And I'll be pressure cooking this for two and a half hours once it hits 15 PSI. And that'll be the sterilization process. Once it comes, once it gets done pressure cooking, I'm going to leave it um, and let it sit there however long it takes to cool down. Probably be overnight actually. But yeah, there we go. So we get up to 15 PSI, go for two and a half hours, and then turn it off and come back when it's all cooled off. And then we'll be ready for inoculation where I'll take these, uh, I'll take these grain jars and dump them in there. And these things are super colonized, so yeah, I've been waiting. I've been waiting too long. Like these things have been sitting over there in the room, just in this little box, kind of getting ignored, and neglected. So, either way, they'll be going in their green bag soon, so they'll have to wait anymore. I'll be back when this is done, pressure cooking and waiting overnight, and ready to inoculate. Okay, I'm back. It's been about an hour after I uh, mixed up the wood pellets and the water. Now I came back and opened this up, and then I just got done. Oops, just got show my shorts. So I just got done uh, mixing this up with my hands, just reaching down in there and grinding around and everything else. Uh, fill capacity on this is just like fill capacity on the Coco Coir of the other bulk poster in the last video. Basically, you just want to squeeze it. You don't want any water just running out, but you can have a couple of drips coming out of it, and that's just right. So now that I have this all to right fill capacity. I need to go get my, I got my bran here, or my, what do I got? Yeah, wheat bran, fine wheat bran. I'm basically just going to put in five cups of this. Well, it would be one cup for the ratio, but I've got five fruiting blocks worth here. So I've got 25 pounds I'm trying to make here. So I'll be five cups of the whole um, sorry, the fine wheat bran. <laughs> Five cups of that into this, you know, 25 pounds basically. And I'll mix that up again, and then I'll start loading the bags here in a little bit and weighing them out. Okay, I'm back. And while the uh, pressure cooker and the blocks are still over there cooling down, I've got to get my tub ready here. It's got a big, huge, clear monotub here. 116 quart. It was like 20 bucks at Home Depot. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a bunch of holes in this thing. I'm going to put probably two on the end here. It's up top. Boink and boink. Maybe even three. And then I'm going to put at least three of them down here in the bottom. Uh, across the bottom here. So one, two. Yeah, probably three across the bottom there. Basically as close to the bottom as I can get it. Uh, so yeah, total, it's going to be like three on each side of the bottom and two or three on each end of the top. Basically, the whole point is just like the other monotub, to let oxygen in the top holes and CO2 go out the bottom holes. But here's what we got on the inside. This is slightly different than the, uh, the bin I used for the, uh, the bulk substrate kind of bed cake ones. This has got a little hump here all the way across the middle. So I kind of think that's good because if there is water, it'll pull on the outsides here, kind of away from the blocks of water when we're sitting in or anything. But I think that's actually good maybe to keep a little bit of moisture in here, right? Just a little moat going around this thing and um, keeping it hopefully high humidity in this thing. Even though uh, the humidity is one thing, but uh, I think what uh, these wood loving um, varieties need more than the enriched soil varieties, they actually need, I think, more fresh air exchange for these varieties. So we'll see if they can get enough in this monotub. If not, I might have to figure out some kind of fan or humidifier fan situation. But I think the monotub by itself should work fine. Um, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and make this monotub now get ready and I'm not gonna put the I'm gonna go straight with micropore tape over the holes because fruiting conditions is kind of gonna be on the bag I'm not gonna change the monotub for fruiting conditions the monotub is gonna be set for fruiting conditions and fresh air exchange 
Whereas when I'm ready to fruit these blocks, uh, I'll do that by basically cutting X's or lines or holes or chopping off the top of the block to let air straight to the, uh, the uh, block rather than have it be completely sealed inside the bag. So I'll go ahead and make this mount up now. I'll come back when it's time to uh, inoculate those bags I have in there and put them in here. Okay, the pressure cooker has finally cooled off. And I made my monotub. I'm gonna grow these sawdust blocks in. You see the three holes in the bottom covered with the microphore tape and the one hole on the top of the ends covered with microphore tape that's the same on both sides. So that's ready. This is finally cooled off. The, the uh, bags are still in here. Here's turkey tail that I'll be doing first. And I've got the oven set at 250 to doing the oven tech because that's all I ever do. I won't be doing anything else, probably ever. I'm not into mushrooms enough to buy a laminar flow hood, <laughs> so that'll never happen. But uh, either way, let me go ahead and clean my hands one more time. And I'll reach in here and get my. Let's open this. Ooh, it's hot. All right, reach in here and get my green bag. I'm going to put the turkey tail in. Actually, let me take this off too long. So hopefully this, hopefully the old uh, oven tech is going to keep this area clean for me. That's the goal. That's the hope. Let's do the light. Let's see down here. And get over here. Here it comes the bag. I'm going to put the turkey tail in. All right. So here's the turkey tail. Here's the bag it's going in. This is where I need to be quickest and cleanest. Right above this oven tech, so hopefully it's keeping all the contaminants out. And this is going to take this. You know what? Let me move this up for a second while I um, sterilize this knife because I'm going to have to get this turkey tail there pretty, pretty quick. We'll call that pretty close to sterilized. Let me get as hot as I can here. The problem with knives is they get hot all the way around. <laughs> My hands are about to get hot. Either way, let's sterilize it a little bit because I'm going to be easy enough to dip out this. Break up the green here, that is. There we go. That's it. Let's take this. I'm using this entire pint in this fruiting, fruiting a block here. Might not be the best way to get in there, but that's the way I'm going to do it. And this one was turkey tail, like I said. And it's completely colonized green, so hopefully it, it's clean, obviously. It's not any contamination in there. Hopefully I can avoid getting any contamination here for this next step, which I don't know. Never knows for. Hopefully it'll Stay clean to be able to get some fruits at the end of this. Okay, there we go. Phew. It's kind of hard getting the last part of the bludge out of there, but now it's out of there. Most of them went in the bag, some of them missed. That's that. So there's the inoculated bag. So this plan is to take this bag and twirl it up. Pull it up. And spin it. And then put the old uh, zip tie on there to keep it shut nice and tight. So that is inoculated. I'm going to go ahead and mix it up now, actually, also. Alright, now that that's all the way tied off, hopefully. In a decent way. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this stuff up as I can, which is certainly not very easy. This bag is actually warmer than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Pretty hot actually. But either way, the point is I'm mixing up the not really grain in the fruiting bag so it'll colonize the bulk uh, sawdust substrate here 
fast, as fast as possible. Either way, that's basically it. So, oops, ooh. So it's in there and it is mixed up. Crank tail is ready. So now this is just gonna go in the model tub, just like that, and wait until it's uh, colonized all the way. And then I can worry about cutting slits and stuff like that later. Either way, that's that one. I'm gonna throw this in here and I'm also gonna put in the other. Put in the, uh, actually, so that's the target tail. And I'm gonna do lion's mane. I got two jars of lion's mane, so I'm gonna make two blocks for that. But uh, I'll do that off camera. Either way, the point is, that's how you do that. You basically just take it out, try and keep it as clean as possible. Dump in your grain spawn, shake it up, or I'll seal it off, shake it up, and that's it. And now it's just sitting over there in the mono tub. It's going to be joined by the other bags. Like I said, two lion's mane and a couple of antler reishi. Hopefully they'll all fit in there. I was trying to get a big enough bin to fit all five of these bags in. I think it might work, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and get these in there now, and I'll uh, be back once everything's in there and it's over in the... Uh, room where I'll be calling it. Okay, here we are. These have been in here for a while now since I inoculated these grain bags, or these uh, uh, sawdust bags, what do you want to call them? And they're finally starting to look a little bit colonized, especially these, uh, this, um, what's in the middle? Um, the lion's mane, are these two middle bags, they're looking pretty colonized. They're getting some, some white colonization there on top. Uh, the reishi as well also showing some colonization over here. The turkey tail isn't showing a whole lot. It's got a little bit on top there as well. But so, so just waiting. It's been a long time. I'm waiting some longer. I might not have put enough um, grain spawn in these. I did one pint per five pound fruiting block here. So we'll see if that ends up being enough and it colonizes all the way if it stalls out or something weird happens. I'm not sure. I've never tried this before. But hopefully, uh, if I just keep waiting, it'll uh, colonize all the way and I can set them to fruiting. But uh, that's where we're at right now. I'll be back as soon as these things have any significant change. Okay, I'm back, and here's where these things are at. I'm not sure I put enough um, grain spawn in this bulk substrate, but we'll see. These are the two uh, reishi ones and the reishi ones, just regular reishi. These are two turkey tail. And that, or sorry, excuse me. These are two um, lion's mane, and that one is turkey tail. The turkey tail looks the least colonized. The lion's mane and the this ratio over here looks the most colonized. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these in their fruiting conditions. I'm going to show you what I do for each one of these. They're going to be slightly different for each uh, different kind of mushroom here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. All right, first I'm going to do the turkey tail here. For the turkey tail, I'm going to do is just... Cut this off and try not to jag myself while I'm doing it. The cuff is zip tied. Take this, squeeze the air out, find it out, and kind of wrap it around the bottom. And now I'm going to put it, make sure I squeeze all the air out. Put a rubber band around it if this rubber band fits. If not, I'm going to have to go find a different one. So there, put a rubber band around it. Try and put it around. There we go, okay. That works. All right. So put a rubber band around it. This stuff is not colonized very well. I'm still going to go ahead and try and put it in flowering and see what happens with it. I'm going to do all of them right now so I don't have to wait on any one. But like I said, the uh, turkey tail is definitely the least colonized of the bunch. But we'll see if we can catch up. So there we go. I'm going to strap it down. Try and get the most air out of it that I can. Try and get a tight rubber band on here. Because apparently if the... Uh, if the plastic doesn't tighten down the surface of the block, then it has problems. But either way, that's about as tight as I can get it, unfortunately. Be nice for the That's that. And now, I'm going to go ahead and just cut some slits in this thing. The target tell we're just doing some sideways slits. And this stuff doesn't look colonized at all on this side. This side looks a little bit colonized, but still not much. So, yeah, I was going to call it this side, or I was going to cut this side open though, because this is the side that's closest to tighten down. You know, it's still terrible, jeez. Anyway, I'll go ahead and cut there. We'll call that good enough. And see what happens with this turkey tail. 
I'm telling you, just slits here. This curry kale likes to and likes to kind of grow in like a just a, a slit type pattern. So that's good enough for curry kale. Done with that one, hopefully. I'll be back in a second while I'm doing the lion's mane. Okay, lion's mane is gonna be the same concept here. It's already seemed like it started pretty good. Now it's really, just really heavily polymerized at the top of this. I have to cut myself again doing this. Take that off. Take it out. See, that looks pretty tall right there. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this down as hard as I can. Try and get the air out of it. Slap it down like that and get the rubber band back on top. Basically, that's as tight as I can get it, because I'm not very good at this currently. The lion's man, I'm going to cut a couple X marks in it. X marks where I want to start growing. It's here. It's here. And X here. Why not? And the final X. We'll see if I even make this video. This doesn't work. There we go. Got a bunch of X's in this thing, so that's... I don't know if I said... Anyway, yeah, this is a lion's mane. I'll throw this back in there and do the other one. And I'll be back to cut the ratio open. Okay, and last but not least is the ratio. So the way I'm going to do this is just chop the top open. And leave it open to the air on top. Hopefully it can grow just like that. So this is definitely different than the other two. Chop the top open and cut it down a little bit. I'm not sure which one of these is antler reishi or regular reishi. I guess I'll find out when they start growing. Apparently reishi is supposed to take forever to grow. So we'll see how it turns out. There's one. Cut the other one open we done here. And here's the other one. Yeah. All right. Here's the other one cut open. This one already got some metabolite. Looks like it's over colonized here. So we'll, have, so we'll see how it grows out. Let me go put it in the bin here. Sorry. With the other ones. And there we got two reishis, the two turkey tails, and the, I'm uh, sorry, the two lion's mane and the turkey tail. Lion's mane's got the little X's there and there and there. And the turkey tail has its slits on that side over here. And then the, those two are just open. I need to spray these. Watch out, Sparky. I'm going to spray these pretty heavily with some uh, water. And then that's a wrap. I'm going to put these in a flowering tissue, basically, which means just with the lights on 12 hours a day. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll come back and uh, update it if something happens good or bad. Here's just a few days after these went in here. And these things have certainly whitened up. The ones here at the front are the reishi. It's still got a little bit of coke wash on there, but they really just totally whitened up and pure hard chunk of mycelium the uh um in the middle is the lion's mane did the same thing but i may have to just pop the top off and top fruit the lion's mane as well because i'm not sure those eggs are going to work because i don't have the uh the plastic bags on there as tight as they should be and then there's the turkey tail which same thing as the the lion's mane it's got the air in there so it might be trying to fruit inside the bag instead of out the holes that i cut so i may just top fruit both those as well but we'll see how it goes but yeah, the ratio definitely started kicking in hard and the uh, it, it all the way super, super colonized as soon as I popped them open. And, and same thing with the uh, lineman, like I said, it's all white and ready to go. And hopefully I'll start getting some fruit bodies here soon on some of these, but uh, we'll see. Back in uh, however long it takes for something to change. Okay, here's like maybe a week after I put these in the fruiting and cut these slits in them. Cut the tops open on these. The ratio are basically solid mycelium looking now all the way white some orange yellow looking colors the <clears throat> um turkey tail sorry not turkey so the um lion's mane has started to fruit out of the little squares i put on there or the little x's i mean so it's got a little fruiting coming out of all these hopefully they'll keep continuing you need to really get a lot bigger than that but either way that's really gotten white and started fruiting but the 
turkey tail over there has really done nothing. Nothing's coming out of the little slits over there. And it didn't even all the way um, colonize mycelium look either. So definitely the lion's mane is getting the fruiting out though. And the <clears throat> reishi are both completely colonized. So we'll see what happens with these. But uh, back in a little while and see how it turns out. All right. It is another day or two and this lion's mane is getting incredibly close to being ready to harvest. I'm not sure exactly when to harvest. I'm pretty sure that uh, I need these little teeth to be about a quarter inch long. And you want it to be fairly dense ball. And you know, and about a quarter inch of teeth is when it, it's basically ripe. And if you let them get longer than that, it's a little overripe. We pull them before that, it's underripe. So they're about in the spot where I need to pull them right now, actually. So it's a tiny little harvest. But I'm going to give it another day or two and see what happens. And uh, I'll come back in here and pop these off here and see how they turn out. But uh, but yeah, waiting for them to be about a quarter inch, in, which is pretty dang close where they are. But I'm going to give them another day or two and see what happens as far as bulking up. Because they've really put on some size here in the last day. So give them another day and see what it looks like. All right, that is where these are going to end for the uh, first flush of this lion's mane, these lion's mane blocks. The teeth in there are somewhere around a quarter inch. The chunks of lion's mane are actually pretty small, but then I didn't cut enough holes in here, I guess, probably. But either way, it was a successful fruiting of these blocks, at least for the first fruiting. So now I'm going to go ahead and take these out here and harvest them. Okay, there they go. And basically all I'm going to do is just pop these little suckers off there, off the block there, and that's a wrap. So let's start with this first one here. Never actually done it before, but it's basically just hanging on by that little, that little, uh, little X there. It's all poking through there, so I'm just going to basically kind of pop it out with my thumb. Oh, there we go. That's it. Boom. I have a chunk of lion's mane. It's a little fluffier than it probably should be. But yeah, you can see it ripped up a little bit of the um, subs or the uh, block there, but it's fine. And the same thing is going to happen here on this side. Just kind of peel my thumb underneath here. Other guys do it with scissors, but not too worried about it. So boom. Popped it off there. Here's a big chunk of it. A little bit of the stuff around there, but that's it. One little chunk here. It's a lot like, feels a lot like, I don't know, like fluffy cauliflower, I don't know. Anyway, that's one he's done. And I could squirt this down or submerge it, soak it, whatever, but I'm just gonna put it back in here. I think it's gonna be fine. I may cut a couple more X's in pretty soon here, but uh, for now I'm just gonna dump it back in here and see what happens. And I'll finish uh, popping the rest of this. Lion's mane off this block, and that's a wrap for the lion's mane. I was thinking I was gonna take the uh, try and fruit the rest of the stuff for this video, but this is just gonna be a lion's mane video because the other stuff's gonna take way longer, I'm pretty sure. Boop. So I'll just get done peeling off all this lion's mane, and that is pretty much it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> got something I can chop off right now. So here's one fruiting uh, flush of lion's mane. Basically it's got a plate full here from two blocks, which isn't a whole lot, but I didn't have a whole lot of uh, holes cut in these. So my next run of lion's mane, hopefully I'll be able to do a little better, but I still have, I think I'll still be able to get a few more flushes out of this and see how it does. But uh, anyway, that's it. So it's basically how to grow lion's mane in a mono tub. And it worked out fine, and I'm probably going to do another video coming up with how to prepare these cooking-wise, or cooking, or uh, roasting, or sautéing, or, or searing, or whatever it is. I'm probably trying a few different ways and see what I like the best. And uh, if you guys haven't yet, and you guys want to see that uh, video, if you haven't yet, please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll be back soon enough with some more random videos of things like this. Thanks for watching. Peace.